Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Edward sent me a note. So Steve, check out this story. Um, a lot of times people will be talking nowadays about how there are programs and things that are available to you for free. Facebook, okay? Uh, just, just to give you an example, Facebook. It's free, right? Now, there's advertising on Facebook, but as we later discovered, Facebook also gathers a lot of information about you and what you look at and so on. And uh, it turns out that information might wind up in other people's hands who can use that information to then pitch you stuff and so on. And so the joke is that actually on Facebook, you are the product. I'm the product. The users are the product. Facebook's not the product. People using it are the product. And so I've seen ads on TV for a company called GoodRx. And GoodRx, the ads say, uh, is a company that you can sign up for for free. And they'll give you this discount card that you can take to a pharmacy. And uh, when you ask the pharmacist, how much will my prescription cost me? And they give you a price. You say, how much have I got this card? And you hand them the card and they go, oh, you now get a discount. And they, they don't tell you what the discount will be beforehand. But it can be substantial. I know people who've used the good RX card and they've gotten some discounts. So one of the questions I always ask, because I'm a consumer protection attorney at heart, I tend to look at these and go, okay, wait a second. If it's free, who's paying for it? Because if nothing else, the ads on television cost a fortune. I've seen a lot of ads on TV for good RX. Someone's paying for those ads. Someone's running the company. Someone's paying the payrolls of the people at the company. I don't, I don't know how big the company is, but the good RX cards get accepted everywhere. That had to take some work. So what's the product? Well, good RX is not so good privacy practices come to light. And this is the Federal Trade Commission uh, and a press release that they issued. So Alvaro Puig wrote this for the Consumer Education uh, Division of the Federal Trade Commission. There are health-related apps and websites everywhere that let you track things like your physical activity, health conditions, caloric intake, prescriptions, and even your ovulation. They ask you for details about yourself and your health, but what if they use and share your information in ways they're not supposed to? FTC says GoodRx, a digital health platform that offers virtual doctor visits and lets users get coupons for prescription drugs, broke its promises to users about how it would use and share their personal health information. The FTC claims GoodRx shared information about users' health conditions and prescription drugs with digital advertisers like Facebook and Google without permission of the users and contrary to what it told users in its privacy policy. GoodRx then used that sensitive health information to target its users with health ads on users' social media feeds. To generate those ads, GoodRx shared with Facebook and others information about its users' prescription medications and sensitive health concerns. Things like uh, male problems or treatments for diseases. And worst of all, it failed to tell its users. And by male problems, I mean M-A-L-E, not M-A-I-L. Those are different. <laughs> but think about it the other way. And, and this thought had occurred to me. There are people out there who've got medical conditions that are quite common, okay? Uh, and there are also people out there who've got medical conditions that are quite unusual. So suppose you owned a company that, that made something that would be extremely useful to somebody who's got a very strange condition. Do you actually do wall-to-wall -wall ads across America to reach the few people who've got that issue? Or would you like to have targeted ads that just went to, directly to those people? How would you find out who's got that? Oh, it turns out that GoodRx will know that because GoodRx, presumably, when the person turns the card in and says, I want the discount, they can track what prescription is being tied to that discount. So it's extremely valuable information they have about you. So to settle the matter, GoodRx will pay a $1.5 million penalty. Companies prohibited from sharing health data with relevant third parties like Facebook, that would use it for advertising and must get users' permission to share health data with relevant third parties for anything else. So what this probably means is there's going to be a big, long digital thing you're supposed to read and click that you agree, and it'll say, if you want your discount, read this and agree. And buried in the middle will be a thing saying, we can share your information with other people. But we'll see. Health apps can have a great benefit to users, but convenience may come at a cost. 
As this and other FTC cases show, there can be risks if companies don't keep their promises. Companies might create profiles about you and share your sensitive information with other companies. And once your information is no longer private, of course, it's hard, if not impossible, to keep it out of the wrong hands. So remember that if they sell your information to one person, that person can then sell it on to somebody else. And once it's out there, it's out there. So there are ways they tell you that you can protect your online privacy, but good luck with this. You can opt out of targeted ads sometimes. A company's privacy notice or policy can be hard to read, but it should spell out what the company will or won't do with your information. Will they share your information with other companies? For targeted advertising, can you control whether ads will be targeted to you based on your app usage and browsing activity? Um, I bought a home a few years ago and hired a home inspector. The guy came out and inspected the home. And when he was done, I paid him. He left and I started getting bombarded with ads for stuff that would be coming from somebody who believed I'd recently bought a home. And there was, I'm not going to say what it was, but there was something about the ads that I realized it was coming from that home inspector had sold my information. And I contacted him and said, I'm being bombarded with ads, make it stop. And he said, I'll do what I can. Um, But the weird part is, is that I wouldn't have thought that just one guy who does home inspections, I'm guessing he probably does like one a day or something, could make that much money selling information like that. But I guess there are marketers out there who have probably approached him and said, hey, for every new home buyer you can pass along to us who's a legitimate person who just bought a home, we'll pay you some amount of money and it must add up because the guy did it. And it was so painfully obvious that it was because of him. And I, I mean, I just, I can't believe it. Now, he's probably thinking, well, that guy's never going to hire me again anyway, because how, how often does one person buy a house? But the interesting thing is that I hadn't found him, my realtor had. And my realtor uh, is a very good friend of mine. And I told her about it. And I said, just to let you know, this happened to me and I'm really pissed off. And she's, okay, I'll stop using him. And she has. <laughs> So it worked out in the end, but also you can get free opt-out tools. That is, if you choose to opt-out, do so on each device and browser you use, which is a lot of work, obviously. Uh, See if you can customize your privacy settings. Uh, Find out if you have the right to tell the company to delete your data. Some state laws give you that right. Uh, So there's also all kinds of advice on the Federal Trade Commission's website. But here's the problem. Good RX. Uh, which does have access to a lot of information about you because when you signed up, you gave them your name, your address, your phone number, your email address. They got all this information about you. And then when you use a discount card, they know what's ailing you. And that's the problem. And, and they shouldn't be doing anything with that information without letting you know first. So I've mentioned before all about this stuff, and, and most people realize this, but many people are kind of shocked the extent it happens. But I've mentioned before that I've been talking and I've said words out loud. And then I go to Facebook and I start seeing pop-up ads that relate to the words I just said. And I've I've told the story before, but it's worth repeating. Uh, A few years ago, I think before I even did videos, uh, so it's got to be like, you know, eight or nine years ago, uh, I actually broke a tooth. I had, (laughs) it's painful just to think about it, but I broke a tooth. One of my teeth broke (laughs) <laughs> one and only time in my entire life that I've broken a tooth. And I was beside myself because that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's only happened the one time. And yes, I still have the band-aid. And so I sent a, a message through Facebook to a friend of mine and said, I just think I just broke a tooth. Who do you recommend I go to see this, about this? And my friend sent me back a note, and then I went to the doctor, went to the dentist. And for the next few weeks, I was getting these ads for dental work and pop-up ads. Do you need dental work? You need help with your broken tooth. I mean, it was that specific. And photographs of people's mouths with broken teeth. Okay, I had one, not multiple, one. (laughs) Way back here. And 
I, I, I'm like, this is driving me crazy because number one, I don't want to see this stuff because the ads were all late. I'd already gotten fixed. But it was annoying to me that they had done that. And then I realized, and I don't apologize because the bulk of my audience is men. It's, it's, it's overwhelmingly male, male, my audience is. But there are women in my audience of, of whom I have the greatest respect for. Because if women show up and, and it's largely men in the audience, I, I, I welcome you because you're rarer than the man is in my audience. But I want to apologize to you right now because I'm going to tell you what I do when I get these pop-up ads for things like teeth and dental work or whatever it is that I most recently mentioned. I will send an email to my friend saying, bikinis, lingerie, uh, uh, models. I might stick a verb or two in there, but, but what happens then is my, my feed changes and I start getting pitched all kinds of ads with pretty women. And <laughs> if I got to look at something that someone's pitching to me and the choice is, uh, a, 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 a medical condition that looks painful or a woman wearing a bikini or lingerie, okay, don't blame me for choosing the latter of the two, okay? Most, most guys would if given the choice and many guys in the audience didn't realize that that was the choice. <laughs> so there might be other things that you like uh, I also have I also have typed in things about cars, you know, Vipers, Dodge Daytonas, Mopars, Plymouth Superbirds, but somehow that goes wildly off the rails. Next thing I'm looking at oil filters. So, <laughs> bikinis, lingerie, models, okay, and that and that that shifts what you see in all those ads on Facebook and elsewhere. So that's how I handle that. But keep in mind. That when you get that discount card from GoodRx, it doesn't cost you anything. It's not free. Something is allowing them to monetize this. And that makes you the product. And that's what's going on there. So they're going to pay a $1.5 million penalty. But the question is, number one, will they change their behavior? Or will they just simply change one line of the box that you check when you sign up for it? And also... What about all the other companies that are doing this and just haven't been caught by the FTC? So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. There's a talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Meow means woof in cat.